We're making pasta with Adam today and when I look what we have on the bench, mm. I think of the Italian flag, you know, red, white, green, typical. Yeah, typical, you know, you probably see these in every Italian kitchen across mm. Italy. You do find the Italians using a lot of tomato and the cheese and basil, but mm. it's the execution, Justine. It's about doing it right, the right steps and executing it right and getting that perfect sauce. So this dish is a San Marino fresh field pasta. So we've got the spinach and ricotta agnolotti. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is a beautiful tomato and buffalo mozzarella sugo. Yeah, buffalo so... Buffalo mozzarella, my favourite. I love it so tasty. <laughs> Very tasty. So I'm going to get my pan on yes. and get my olive oil into there. Okay. Now, what I need you to do is just chop those cherry tomatoes in half. Sure, I can do that. Now, a good amount of olive oil. Now, with the garlic, this is all about the executing. Just the back of the palm, just squash it a little bit, yeah? Okay, so you're not finely chopping it at all, nope. just putting it in as is? As is. Now, the reason for that, and I was taught this whilst I was away, but you're basically flavouring that oil with the garlic. So a couple minutes in there, we'll start to flavour up that olive oil, then we're going to take it out and gonna add in some basil really fast. Off the heat for 30 seconds, we'll crisp it up, and out that goes. So this is what I'm talking about regarding execution. You know, a lot of the times people make a nap sauce, you know, the tomato sauce. Chop up, like you said, onion, garlic, slowly cook it off. But this is a quick sugo. It's a really quick, pack full of flavour sugo. And it is using these beautiful little cherry tomatoes. So this is not our ordinary tin chopped tomatoes. This is actually a product from Italy, San Marziano tomato. So it comes from Naples, the south of Italy. Now, they do do the cherry tomato and they're known for the Roma tomato. And about August, they can them up. For one month, they're working 24-7 getting these fantastic tomatoes into the can. And this is the product you get. It is really rich in flavour, but it just needs to be cooked out really fast. Yeah, and uh, they do have that intense tomato sweet flavour, mm. not acidic at all. No. Beautifully sweet. And of course, if you can't find them, you can use any other canned tomato. But yeah. I've seen them at some Italian delis. Yes. If you can, it's yeah. worth giving it a go. If you're going to go spend that, you know, getting those buffalo mozzarella and you're going to yes. spend that bit of money, Try and find it, you know, do give it a go because it's worth it. Garlic's mm. starting to take on some colour, so that's great. It's getting into my oil. Probably another 30 seconds more and I'm going to pull it out. So you don't want to get brown, you don't want to get that nutty taste. And, you know, I know I'm big on the whole garlic and nutty taste, but in Italian cookery, we do not burn the garlic, mm -hmm. ever. It just ruins the sauce. Yeah, so out that comes, pick that up. Take that off the heat. Now, I need some of that basil, please, Justine. Yes. Now, the leaves just quickly into there, so it's off the heat, totally off the heat. So and just in they go. In. Yep, in they go. I'm standing back just in case they uh, spit on me. Oh. <laughs> well, then I better go like this. Oh. <laughs> oh, here we go. So there they go. Now, that's just stir that around. So, lucky I've got long arms. Yes. Oh, it smells. Yes. So and look, good. we're not browning, you know, like when you deep fry basil leaves, obviously you get that texture and that crunch, but I'm just wanting to work it, cook it out. Yeah, and obviously it's spitting like that because there's a little bit of moisture yes. in, in the basil leaves, so, so it's normal. Put that back onto the heat. There we go. Cherry tomatoes, please. Okay, in they go. Heat back up now, so I'm getting my heat really nice and hot. So I really want to blister the skin of these cherry tomatoes, pop open that flesh, get all that juice happening, get all the flavours. Mm. Some salt always helps here. Now, don't worry, that's all good for the rest of the dish. Exactly. I mean, we've got that many tomatoes, but we've still got a lot of other ingredients to add here, so... You'd be amazed oh. how much that oil has taken on the garlic and the basil, right just so quickly. And that's what we're talking about. I'm talking about the execution of making the right sugo. Yeah. Now, we're not going to add the pasta, you're thinking, when's the pasta going in? It's going to be another couple of minutes away. I really want to collapse them down. Yeah. Then I'll add in the canned San Marzano tomato, get them in there, and rapid cook that for two to five minutes, or probably three to five minutes, sorry. And what happens is it's just going to collapse again. We turn it off, and then we drop our pasta. So the sauce is cooked now for about Four minutes, mm -hmm. turned it off. Gonna I want get... to have a taste of this sauce too because it. it looks just so rich. It hasn't even been cooking for long. No. And that's the thing about those tomatoes, okay? I know I go on a little bit too much about them, but it is worth it. Trust me. It is worth it because it's just amazing. The annulot is in, so just be gentle. Use the back of the spoon when you're stirring any fresh filled pasta. Mm -hmm. Just stops the encasing, so that beautiful little filling coming out. So they don't take long at all. Look, they come up to the top, a minute or two, let that boil and we're away. So what we're going to do is just slowly heat this sauce back up, just really on low. Now I'm going to tear the buffalo mozzarella in there. I'm going to cook this pasta to about three quarters, okay? Add it into the sauce, 
tearing the buffalo mozza so oozes through the agnolotti into the tomato. And you were saying when you were in Italy, you saw how they made yes. buffalo mozzarella. What a treat, isn't it? I was lucky enough to make it. So I was lucky enough to obviously milk the buffalo and then make Did the you? cheese. Yeah, yeah, that was an experience alone, <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just amazing. Really, really creamy and stringy. When you get that buffalo mozzarella hot, it's just like... <sighs> so good. Great. Look at them. Agnolotti up to the top. Mm -hmm. They're ready. Gosh, it doesn't take long at all. It doesn't take it? long. And we're going to finish it in the sauce. So even if I take a little bit of this pasta water, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Now remember too that the cheese is going to discharge a little bit of its own liquid, so you don't want to add too much. Yep. And today we've used the spinach and ricotta ones. Yes. Oh, here he goes. I just want to, you know, I don't <laughs> want to get on your lovely shirt there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the spinach and ricotta ones work well with the tomato. Again, the colours of Italy. Yeah. Crank up the heat a little bit. Now, mm -hmm. the buff. Just tear pieces. <gasps> See? Stick. Like so. Really, you could serve that at the table, yeah? Take it to the table, let it just ooze away yeah. and make it a centrepiece and let everybody dig in by themselves. Yeah. Just another minute, just to finish off the cooking process of the pasta, takes in the flavour mm. and that buff will just break down a little bit more. And we were also talking about taking the pasta out a little mm. bit beforehand, finishing it off in the sauce, and that yeah. doesn't just go for pasta like no. penne or yeah. spaghetti, but also with the filled fresh pastas too. With the filled, just be that little bit more delicate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you do have that little filling inside, just take that little bit more time. You know, things you dried pasta like spaghetti and penne is a little bit more robust, so you can just drop it in there and give a bit of a toss around, but this one just needs a little bit of extra love. Aww. A little bit of basil. Basil? Just a couple of little pieces. I'm going to get that heat just a little bit higher so it melts it down. Yeah, so just, just big pieces or you want me to just tear them? Tear, please. Okay, yeah. chef. Yeah, and it's always last, Basil. A good pasta sauce should just be at the last minute so it's yeah. fragrant, colour. You know, oh. we've got a double whammy here. I mean, we infuse that oil at the beginning mm. with that beautiful basil and the sure. garlic. And then here. That's so it. See, look at that. Looks like the Italian flag, hey? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit of salt to finish. Oh. Look at the cheese. It's just gooey. Mm -hmm. The way it should be. Get a little bit of that basil. Yeah. And you've got parmesan. Does it really need it? Just yeah, a just touch? a touch. Just, just a real little touch. And, and the parmesan just gives that little highlight of that little bit of saltiness. Plenty. 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 Okay. Normally I'm... <laughs> you know? we, we just have to have a taste of this one. I think oh, it's very I'm important. My arm, let me tell you. So where was that cheese? Oh, here it is. Oh, Look at that. Tomato. And of course, the beautiful pasta here. Look at that cheese. Gooey goodness. I think that would have to be one of my favourite pastas I've cooked on your show. I mean, you have done a lot of pasta. <laughs> we could sit here all afternoon talking about them, but boy, simple, simple, simple. Quality ingredients, that tops all of them. Three years, I think that's my favourite. <laughs>